We use the service folder. That, uh, we'll start with the processional hymn shortly. May this service uh, be God's avenue of getting his word, his truth to you. And in the process, by his power and love, comfort you and give you strength in your loss. Uh, the truth, uh, knowing the truth of the resurrection of Jesus that he gives to us. Let's sing the first hymn. Please stand for the hymn. begin this service in the name of our living God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Let us direct our thoughts to God. Draw near to us, O God, as we draw near to you. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sorrow with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. Thanks be to God. The symbolism of this Paschal candle is uh, this. We light it as a reminder of our baptism. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. Paul is clear on that one in Romans 8. And it goes on that we were buried there, Romans 6, we were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too would have a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. Amen. 
I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? Christ was delivered for our offenses and raised for our justification. The Holy Spirit, the Comforter, has been poured out upon the people of God. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? I know that my Redeemer lives, and that in the end he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh I will see God. We read together. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. We pray. O God of grace and mercy, we give thanks for your loving kindness shown to Judy Hobbin and to all your servants who, having finished their course in faith, now rest from their labors. Grant that we also may be faithful unto death and receive the crown of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Throughout scripture, God expresses his victory over death. You heard that in that psalm, uh, so well known. Uh, sometimes we uh, know it so well, we skip over, like the part about he leads us through the valley of death, not into the valley of death and then just leave us there. Uh, here in uh, Isaiah 41, notice that at a time when things are really going wrong or in this application for today, uh, when we are really hurting, notice who is here to hold you up. But you, O Israel, my servant Jacob, whom I have chosen, you descendants of Abraham, my friend, I took you from the ends of the earth, from its farthest corners I called you. I said, you are my servant. I have chosen you and have not rejected you. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. For I am the Lord your God, who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. In 1 Thessalonians 4, Paul is clear on what will happen to us when Jesus returns. And notice he starts out explaining that we don't grieve the same way that those who are without Jesus' grief, still hurts. But we have some hope at the same time. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that's their word for dead, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, 
will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Here in uh, John 10, a whole chapter where Jesus explains various angles about him being your good shepherd, uh, a very positive term in, in their world. Uh, notice how far your good shepherd goes for you. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they would have life and have it abundantly. I'm the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, and the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. that I was rotten to the core I was the youngest child so I got by with more I guess she was tired by the time I came along She'd laugh until she cried I could do no wrong She would always save me Because I was her baby I worked a factory in Ohio A shrimp boat in the bio I drove a truck in Birmingham Turned 21 in Cincinnati I called home to mom and daddy I said your boy is now a man She said I don't care if you're 80 You'll always be my baby But that one is my baby I got a call in Alabama So come on home to Louisiana And come as fast as you can fly Cause your mama really needs you And says she's gotta see you And she might not make it through the night the whole way I drove 80 So she could see her baby She looked like she was sleeping And my family had been weeping By the time that I got to her side And I knew that she'd been taken In my heart it was breaking I never got to say goodbye 
I softly kissed that lady And cried just like a baby As we begin the message, grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The story of Zion and Judy and being here, uh, ideally it would have been that, that, that Pastor Kyle would have been here. Pastor Kyle, one day he, he came into my office, he, uh, he was here about three years ago and he uh, took another call about half a year, uh, half a year ago, but he came into my office and he was all excited and, 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 and he just, not for the first time, but he just met Judy. I don't know if you all had similar reactions or things like that the first time you met, but he came and he was all excited in the office. And, and, and he goes, oh man, I got a story. And, and, and by the time, well, he left, I, I think I heard the story three, four times and probably was told maybe 40, 50 times. But he, he went and, well, he was new at the time and he saw Judy maybe for the, I would guess the second, third time, something, something like that. And he a flood of faces and a whole bunch of different people. And well, so he, he, he kind of, it was a different place in a different context. And he said, well, I don't, I don't know. I'm one of the pastors at, at Zion Lutheran Church. Are, 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 you, a, are you a member there? I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit new. And she said, no, I'm your bartender. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. <laughs> And that spunky personality was Judy. Pastor Kyle's story of an individual meeting with her. Well, we could really, we could go around and I suppose all of us could say and we could tell a, a story just like that. I, I know there's uh, been an up and down weekend for the family and there's weddings and funerals and, and, and all of those things. If I could maybe combine a, a little bit a little bit of a metaphor between the two, the, the weddings, right? There's the, 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 the groom. And the groom comes and usually stands in a, in, in a place like this. And you have, I mean, it's kind of the people here. It's a sea of faces of people who love you, people who want the best for you, people who are, who are there and who will be there along the journey in life. And you can come and you can look at the sea of faces and, and you can remember the times and you can remember the stories and days like that are, they're such a joy, right? A celebration. And there's a strange irony that while well, we're here at a funeral, but it's a lot of the same people and it's a lot of the same stories. And well, the person of honor sits here in, in front of all of you, and people cry at weddings, tears of joy, and we cry at things like this, tears that are, that are tears of grief. We have all the stories and all the memories, and February 4th, 1967, Ken, you came and, and you stood up, and you were, you were the groom and maybe in front of a lot of the same people here. And you both said, I do, and began this journey. What a wonderful, wonderful thing to do. And how many stories, and now how many people are gathered here? The people, just think about all the people. It, well, it was 11 siblings. That's quite a family, quite, quite, quite a story. I imagine if you were one of the siblings, you, you probably, like, well, is seven enough? Is eight enough? Is nine enough? It, it, it was important to get to 11. 
though. And all the stories with all of the sisters and the time together, and in many ways, the sisters helping to raise and helping to bless and helping to be with, to be with Judy. It's good, so good to have family gathered around. And then the other stories that came. Maybe it was your birthday. Maybe not a birthday like we like to think about it, parties and things like that, but it was actually your birthday. And she, she took on the day of your birth and held you. Probably cried a little bit that day, tears of, of joy. And she gave you a name and was there alongside you and helped and blessed you in a very good and in a very deep way. And you got to use that special word. You could say, Mom, what a cool thing. I was talking with Dar Darlene a little bit last night, talking about uh, scriptures and things like that, and, and life never easy and, and so difficult, and there have been certainly trials and struggles, but the one text that she raised up, it was, uh, I am the resurrection and the life. And then it goes on to say very confidently, very boldly, uh, Jesus says, uh, that even though you, you die, because he is the resurrection and the life, you live. And I couldn't help, I, I went back and looked at the story. With that story, where that verse happens in the book of John, John chapter 11, and it's uh, the story of Lazarus coming back from the dead. But there was, uh, at the epicenter of that story, two ladies named Mary and Martha, and there was maybe at the epicenter of lots of conversations of faith, two ladies, uh, Darlene and Judy, and they they talked about Jesus, and they talked about the faith, and they talked about, uh, on the phone, it was great. Sometimes you, you go to people's houses, you go to people's homes, and you say, hey, do you got a Bible here? And they look, you know, oh man, the, where, uh, bookshelf probably, they go, you know, whew, dust goes flying. <laughs> Bibles are kind of hard some places to find, but not in that, it was just that, get the Bible, oh, here it is. <laughs> and there were, well, the scriptures that she wanted, but there's something in Jesus being the resurrection and the life, and there's something in, well, in just us being part of that and knowing that story, and there's something about women gathered together to talk and to discuss faith, and Mary and Martha that day saw a dead man. They saw their brother, who they knew to be dead, when Jesus called him with his voice, a dead man came back to life. There is a power, there is a hope in Jesus Christ that we see and that we confess even, even this day. The wedding metaphor, the, I once had, it was two things happened on the same night, and maybe you've felt like this a little bit your own self, there was a wedding rehearsal, and then there was a visitation. And then the next day, there was a wedding, and there was a funeral. It is a, a horrible mix of emotions to go from a visitation, everybody sad, and then to go and to walk into a wedding rehearsal, everybody happy and joyful, and it's great. And then the next day, you do the same thing kind of over again. There's a wedding, and everybody's happy, and the, well, the funeral happens, and everybody's sad. And maybe you've been up and down that journey this past weekend, and I know it's a hard struggle, and I know it's really difficult to go back and forth between those emotions, but I would remind you the the commonality between all of those stories is, is love. Sometimes uh, they say, if you love somebody and they're in your presence, the feeling and the emotion that that is, it's, it's joy. You're very happy when you love somebody and you're in your presence. There's uh, been times when you love somebody and they're away, and maybe it's trucking for 10 days or so or something like that. You love somebody and there's a way. There's kind of a feeling of, 
of longing, like I want them to come back, or I'd like if I could be with that person again. When you love somebody and, well, and this is the story, the emotion most certainly is, is grief. But behind that whole up and down roller coaster is a, is a story of love. And not just your love, it's Jesus' love as well. The last few years, pneumonia and health concerns and, and things like that, it, it's been trying, it's been difficult, it's been that a lot of times death seems to be, seems to be very near and there'd be things would get better and maybe things would, would get worse. And then there was, well, there was a, a final breath, and breath had been a bit of a struggle for, for a long time. And then there's this, there's this other story. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And it's after that final breath here, a new meeting. I'm not sure if she said, I'm your bartender, but Jesus looked at her. <laughs> Maybe she did. But Jesus looked at her and said, Judy, I know my sheep and I, I call them by name. I'm, I'm Jesus, your savior, the resurrection and the life. And she was then seeing what faith only hopes for, what faith only longs for. She was with her savior. And then she opened the door, or he opened the door, and we have gathered here all the, the loved ones that we have, and all of the stories, and all of the, all the times together, and all the people that we love, and all the people that, that, that love us, and it's so much bigger there. This is probably the biggest funeral we've had since COVID, but nonetheless, this is a big crowd. But Jesus pulled the curtain, or however it happens, and it's all of the saints, and it's all of the family members, and it's all of the, all of the stories, like the things that we wonder about, who came before, and how did faith, well, manage through the generations, and what are the stories of the, just the, 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 the revealing and the opening of a family. Brothers and sisters brought under a banner of grace and glory and good. And let this be your hope in the midst of all of these emotions. I know grief and joy and struggle and hope and we'll go back and forth for a while, most certainly. But you have the family and you have the people around. And we have a hope and a joy in Jesus Christ. And on this day, we can very confidently say, Judy, is now home, home at her real home. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which is above all human understanding, may it keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We now will continue with the prayers. Uh, we'll say together the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll have the commendation. Uh, as, we, as we pray, I invite you to stand. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne of grace, giving you thanks and praise for Judy, for the family, for the friends gathered here today. We ask, Lord, that in the midst of the grief, in the midst of the trial, in the midst of also a great story of faith and resurrection, that you would be with us. We ask that you would walk alongside the road with us, that your grace would ever comfort us in the midst of all of this, and we give you thanks and praise for so many people gathered here today with so many stories and so many times when they have been a blessing to her and times when she has been a blessing to us. In the midst of all of these things, we ask, Lord, that you would allow us to give thanks, indeed, for a story of life, for a story of Judy, and for, well, indeed, the many things 
the wonder that she is to all of us. For all these things, we give you thanks, we give you praise, and we ask, Lord, that you would allow us through this valley to come together to share and to tell stories and to give glory and honor to you. All these things we pray in Jesus' name, who has taught us all to pray. We say the Lord's Prayer. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, who art in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, us this day our daily bread, bread and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, lead us not, not into temptation, temptation but deliver, deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power, power and, the and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We have the commendation. May God the Father, who created this body, may God the Son, who by his blood redeemed this body, may God the Holy Spirit, who by holy baptism sanctified this body to be his temple, keep these remains to the day of the resurrection of all flesh. We pray. Almighty God, by the death of your Son, Jesus Christ, you have destroyed death, and by his rest in the tomb you have sanctified the graves of your saints, and by his glorious resurrection you have brought life and immortality to light through the gospel so that all who die in him abide in joy as to their souls and in hope as to their bodies. Receive our thanks for the victory over death and the grave which he obtained for us and for all who sleep in him. Keep us in everlasting fellowship with all that wait for you on earth and with all who are around you in heaven, and union with him who is the resurrection and the life, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Let us go forth in peace. In the name of the Lord. I have one final announcement. We have a misprint in the bulletin. The reception is not at the VFW. It is at 416 Main. And so you're invited uh, as we, we will go to the cemetery and then the reception is 416 Main here. What? I got the wrong number. Four, 17. We know where it is. <laughs> I call it rustics. <laughs> yes, good. very good, very good. We will close now uh, with our final hymn, How Great Thou Art. Savior God to thee, how great thou art, 